Well, hello there. I have redone the Nightline Lithophane generator. So let's take a look at the new features. Here it is, you just go there. So you can see I have redefined how the Nightlight Lithophane is designed. It is more intuitive now, and you can easily create multiple nightlights with different pictures that have the exact same dimensions. So let me show you how it works now. The layout is the same as it was before. First thing you want to do is upload a picture. So here's the picture I'm going to use. It's Jon Snow protecting us from the White Walkers as Game of Thrones will be on again in 11 days from the time of this recording. And then you decide whether or not you want to crop it. If you crop it, you can make the dimensions of your nightlight whatever you want them to be. If you don't crop it, then we're stuck with the aspect ratio of your picture and we just have to work with it, meaning that you might not have the nightlight width defined right here that you want and you'll just be stuck with whatever is necessary to give you the other dimensions that you specify. So here's the lithophane resolution. It's defined the same way as it always was and as in all of my other tools, which is it's the distance between unique heights on your lithophane surface. So right now we have a unique point every quarter of a millimeter. So that's a pretty fine resolution, much finer than most 3D printer nozzles, which is you know typically about 0.4 millimeters. And then you have the maximum thickness and the minimum thickness. These define how thick your lithophane is at its darkest point and how thick it is at its lightest point. So obviously for the minimum thickness, you want to keep that larger than the line width of your printer or basically larger than the nozzle diameter of your printer. Then you have your frame width and that defines the size of the frame that goes around your picture. And I've also changed it so that the frame width is the same on the sides as it is on the bottom. The slot width defines the diameter of the slot right here. All of this is shown up here under the design schematic. So you can reference this of course and it shows you exactly what the dimensions are defining. The slot depth defines the distance between the back of your nightlight lithophane and the interface between the nightlight lithophane and the nightlight. So it's this distance right here. The adapter thickness is how thick this base plate is right here, as, as shown right here. And the light to lithophane distance is the distance between the center of your interface to the nightlight and the front of the lithophane surface. Now scrolling down to the radius of curvature slash flatness, that defines how curved your front surface is. So up here, you can see how curved it is. If I change this uh, radius of curvature slash flatness, you can see how it changes your design. If I make it 160, it just became flatter. The distances are all still the same except for on the corners over here, which you can see is not defined in this picture. Those shift as you change the flatness. And then the nightlight width gives you the distance from edge to edge of the nightlight. It's defined right here. So if I make that 200, then this becomes 200. And you can also see that the image has to be cropped differently in order to accommodate this new width. So here's the height, and of course that does exactly what you think it would. And it is again defined up here, it's the height from the very top of the lithophane to the very bottom of the lithophane. So if you know that your printer can only print up to 200 millimeters high, then you know that you cannot make this greater than 200 millimeters. So now I'm going to design one that I want. I honestly don't know what I want. I'm just gonna kind of look at this picture and see if it looks good to me. Okay, so I have the lithophane dimensioned the way that I want it to be dimensioned. Now I just need to crop my picture, which I can do down here with the X shift, Y shift, and rectangle scale. The X shift shifts the picture to the right and left. Obviously, it can't be shifted any further, so if I go all the way to one, it doesn't move. If I go to zero, it stays the same. So I'll just put a value of 0 0.5, and I'll shift it in Y to 0.6. You see it moved the cropping rectangle up. So I'm going to keep going because I want to have all of that in there. And that looks pretty good. Now I could adjust the scale here and make the rectangle half as large, but I want to keep it full size. And now if you're logged into an account, what you can do is you can click Save Settings and then Create STL. 
and that will make it so that every single time that you're logged into your account and you come to this page, the same settings are there for you. I'm not going to save my settings this time, and I'm just going to create the STL. Of course, every time that you use lithophanemaker.com, please cite lithophanemaker.com so that other people can find the tool as well. And thank you to all my patrons up here. Um, I ask you guys to consider becoming a patron, and I've got many patrons that have been helping me pay for the server that I have. It's still not fully paid for, but we're getting there, and I really appreciate the support. So now back to the tutorial, here is the file that was created for you by lithophanemaker.com. It's a zip file, so I'm just gonna save it. So I'm extracting it. Here's what was in that extracted file. You have the STL file, and you have a record of the settings that you picked to create the STL file. If you want to look at the settings file, you need to open it up with something other than just regular Notepad. So I use Notepad++, and that gives you the proper carriage returns. You can see the settings that you used in there. So now I've pulled it into Cura, and I have my CR10 PLA lithophane profile set up, so I just slice it. It's going to be about a seven hour print. If you want to find more about the settings I use, I show those settings in the video I put up here, I think. So now I have saved my G code into a folder and I'm going to upload that G code to Octoprint and print from there.